on today's show. When it rains, it pours. Can the Thunder make the playoffs given Serge Ibaka's knee injury? In Mailbox, we answer the question, what clip could you watch all day long? And throw it up high. We'll count down the top 10 plays of the week. It's Wednesday, March 18th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters. Whether you're joining us live online or catching us on NBA TV, we're very, very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, it's Tess Mellis. Just because it's March Madness, don't forget about us. Yes, I'm begging. <laughs> to my right, starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. Hey -o! Hey -o! Hey -o! And finally, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. Lily. Lily, all right, fun show tonight. Uh, we're going to open up the starters mailbox. You guys are great at sending in questions. We've got some fun ones. And then we'll also have, it's a short week for us here, but uh, we'll also have the top ten plays of the past five days instead of seven. But first, got to start addressing another injury, unfortunately. And once again, it involves the Oklahoma City Thunder. Serge Ibaka will miss an estimated four to six weeks after having an arthroscopic knee procedure to address swelling and soreness. Now, the good news is that Ibaka underwent an MRI that revealed no structural or concerning really long-term issues with his knee. The bad news, of course, is that the Thunder are already short Kevin Durant. He's still not back in the lineup. And oh yeah, they're in the, uh, the midst of a playoff race here. So another devastating loss for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Can they survive this? I'd like to declare it right now. I think this season is a failure for the Thunder, no matter what happens. They might sneak in to the eighth spot, but they're not going to be going full bore, full operational work there when they get there. Right. And they'd be playing the, uh, the Golden State Warriors in the first round. you got to be playing great to beat the Golden State Warriors. So even if they get there and they lose in the first round, I think the season is a failure for them. Write it off. There's no way they can beat them. Surge is out, as you mentioned, Skeets. He won't be right even if he does get back. KD, somewhat in the same boat as yeah, well. Yeah, you see it here. The Pelicans picked up a win last night. So they're tied in the win-loss column. They're both 37-30, and 30, the Pelicans on the Thunder. Though, the reason we got the Pelicans at number eight there, they got the tiebreaker. The Thunder got to be a full game up. They cannot be tied. It's going to be tough for anybody to move up to the seventh spot. They're four and a half back That's with right. about 15 Perfect. to go. So, yeah, this is devastating news. Uh, Scholes, our friend Scholes at GQ uh, Magazine, he had a great question. He, he said, or he pointed this out, that no other team in the league really feels like they have to sort of win right now because there's so many questions concerning this team. Will Westbrook and Durant stick around for the long term? I are think they, they have next year, do though. That? They have next year. Can Scott Brooks, Scott Brooks excuse me, actually coach this team? Is he the right guy? Was it a mistake letting James Harden go? Is the little B curse real? <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a, a lot, lot of, of questions surrounding this team, and it's unfortunate because every year they do have a, a quote-unquote excuse because someone's always banged up with this squad as they go into the playoffs. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the big question about them is now how they cope with this and what the effect has long-term because you think Kevin Durant, obviously, this is where he's been throughout his, most of his career. Obviously, Seattle days, the same franchise. This is where he wants to win. He's already committed himself to this city. He wants that opportunity. But if things don't go right this season and then again next season, you do wonder if it will start to have, make some questions in his mind whether or not he should move on. I still think they have next season, though, because as you mentioned here, as we've seen, I like to bring this up plenty on this show. <laughs> They've got a really, really good recent history, but the injuries have sort of crippled them the last couple of years. Yep. Good playoff success, getting to the finals in 2012, and since in 13 and 14, they've had an injury that kind of derailed them. So Scott Brooks has won a lot of regular season games. Yes, I think he can be ridiculed for not having pretty basketball at the end of games, but I think they're going to give KD next year to work with this team, and that's why I think this season is basically a write-off. And they've got their best talent, their best unit since KD has been in the league. So I, I think next year, everybody's under contract besides Ennis Cantor. I think you can go forward and look forward to that win. I mean, imagine these guys healthy. They're a top seed in the Western yeah, right. Conference. I mean, most sure. people would agree with that. They are still, of course, in this race. But let's talk specifically, like, what happens with no Serge Ibaka. I mean, I know he's not on the same level as a Westbrook or Durant, but he is the third guy on this team, puts up some points, can hit the jumpers, even added the three. Can they survive, forget the offense, because Cantor's solid mm -hmm. defensively without Serge Ibaka over the next four to six weeks? It's going to be tough. They definitely have stayed in the playoff race the whole year through all these injuries because they have had a really good defense because Serge yeah. Ibaka covers up for mistakes for seriously everybody else on the court mm. with a superhuman way he flies around and can be at the rim and throw shots out to half court. He was the perfect fit with Cantor, we've said, because they just he does everything that Ennis Cantor can't. And without him on the court, it's going to be a problem because... 
Up until they traded Prentice Cantor, the Thunder had a top 10 defense. Since they've had him, they're in the bottom 10 of the league, and it's not a coincidence that also the Utah Jazz's defense, since Ennis Cantor left, has been amazing. Yeah. One positive for the Thunder, Serge Ibaka seems to heal just as well as Russell Westbrook. I mean, do you remember last year in the playoffs, we were just through the second round. The headlines were Serge Ibaka has season-ending injury, that calf injury, and then he came back yeah. two games later. Yeah, but maybe they should take their time. Maybe they should let their guys That's get 100% healthy so they don't run into problems come playoff time again because it seems like the Thunder players kind of always get hurt, which is a freak thing, but then they always get re-hurt again, which isn't necessarily a freak right, thing. Right, it's because sometimes, you know, Kevin Durant especially, mm -hmm. did he come back too early because they were in this playoff race and Westbrook was doing all he could, all he could to keep him afloat, but did Katie come back and was that yeah. a part of the, the foot issue? As I mean, it who was. really knows? We're not doctors here. I mean, I, yeah. I, I <laughs> failed at doctor's school. <laughs> no. uh, as it was, it was going to be tough to win three series on the road. Extremely tough. And now with this injury, when they're not going to be full bore going into the postseason against the best team mm -hmm. in the Western Conference, it makes it even tougher. I just, I really think there's no chance against the Golden State Warriors. We like to think that anybody can beat anybody in the Western Conference, but, but I think that's sort of undermining what the Golden State sure. Warriors have done this year. They're going to be working well. They've got no injuries. Clay will be back in about 10 days. That team against a banged up anybody. Mm -hmm. Gives the other team no chance. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know right now teams are really going to pick on the, the Thunder. They're going to go at them while they're weak like this because this is no one feels sorry for anyone in the NBA. So when they're missing their best offensive player and they're missing their best defensive player, right. teams are going to see them right now and just go, let's go out there and make sure we get a win against the Thunder. By the way, you know I'm really not a doctor when I call med school doctor school. Uh, yeah. Classic doctor school. <laughs> That's We're a just sure, going to let that go. That's a sure giveaway. But, okay, here's a question for everyone watching at home and you guys here. Who would you rather make the playoffs? The Pelicans getting in there and Anthony Davis getting some That's reps in his question. first year or the Thunder because, you know, still a possibility mm. KD should come back and maybe even a buck if he comes back in three or four weeks. Who would you rather see just as a fan? I really don't mind, but I would love to see Anthony Davis just in the playoffs and see how he responds to that big pressure because we know he's a fantastic player. He's had a fantastic season. And even though the Warriors would be heavily favoured in that series, he, you just don't know what could happen in the first round. Remember Dikembe Mutombo against the Sonics. Remember Baron Davis against the Mavericks. Right. Like, no sometimes one, one guy. Exactly. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't it's, pick the Pelicans to beat the Warriors. No, but sometimes no, one guy can be. No one here. would have picked the, the Nuggets to beat the Sonics or, or the sure. Warriors to beat the Mavs that time. But if Anthony Davis, knowing how skilled he is and how gifted he is, just somehow gets it all together to say Tyreek Evans is playing well, Ryan Anson, Drew Holiday, those guys. Eric Gordon they, continuing they, to hit threes. Like, yeah. They've got a very, very good team. They've got similar problems to the Thunder with all those injuries, but they have got one game changer superstar who's got a fantastic offensive game and a fantastic defensive game. It's unlikely, but I'd just love to see how Anthony... So Davis you would pick the going. Pelicans? They have yeah. a very good team there, but they have very little chance of beating the Golden State Of course State they Warriors. do. But, but, so far this season, yeah. the Warriors got killed and lost in the overtime, so it kind of <laughs> says you can get beat by a ton or you can get beat by a little yeah. ton. And as great as Anthony Davis is and as fun as he is to watch... Russell Westbrook. Oh, man. I yeah. mean, there's almost something intriguing about yeah. Russell Westbrook and a bunch of other guys just going up against the uh, Golden State Warriors and seeing if he could just see, do it himself. It's almost the better the devil you know situation that they'd probably rather face Oklahoma City because they know what they're getting, even though they're banged up. But if you're going up against the Pelicans, who have very, very little playoff experience, you, it's a little bit harder to set matchups for them, you know? I and, think they would be a lot more confident going yes. against a team that has never played in the playoffs, also yes. super injured as compared to West, Russell Westbrook, who has been crazy since the All-Star break. Imagine what he's going to be like like if he's actually in the playoffs compared to just trying to get his team there. I think it's even funny you say that. Golden State Warriors, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they have two games against the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. Remaining. You could see them remaining. You could see. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Kerr rests some guys, they take it easy, to actually, help, to actually <laughs> help the Pelicans to get in in, in order to yeah, play but them. you don't want to give them any confidence instead against of, you, though, either. Oh, you? you think that would be disrespectful? Oh, I mean, you, you just don't want to give any team that you may be facing an opportunity to get some confidence against you. And as for the Thunder, I'd rather them miss the postseason so they don't have that bad taste in their mouth. Oh, we got to the playoffs and then we lost again. I'd rather them just sort of write it off, mm -hmm. just kind of feel comfortable going into next year with everybody in their lineup and give it one last healthy chance at least. Well, if that ever happens. It'll happen. I mean, I'm remember. starting to believe, believe the little bee curse, man. Maybe it's real. I think it's real. I think it's real. Let's hear what people think. Would you rather the Pelicans or the Thunder get that eighth spot and take on the Warriors in the first round? Let us know on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. we got to take a break. Lots more still to come. It's a fun question when we come back in the starters mailbox. Which clip could you watch over and over and over again? We'll debate that and a whole lot more when we come back. Take them to doctor school, Steph. <laughs> doctor school. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Yeah. Who's your man? Woohoo!
Yeah, we got mail because you guys are great at sending them in. Keep them coming, the emails, uh, the starters at mba.com. Got a few here for you tonight, guys. Question number one comes from Jackie MFTW, coming through Twitter, actually. You can also hit us up on Twitter. Uh, she writes, I could watch that clip of Steph Curry running through the Clippers all day. So I was wondering, what particular clip could you watch all day? That's a good pick. It's a fun question. Watching Steph work this four-man weave here, I don't know <laughs> what you call it. Just goes into One a crowd. Weave, really? Yeah. yeah, it comes out of a crowd. Yeah. See a Chris, see a DeAndre, <laughs> see a Spence, turn around, gun it. Yeah, every view of this is awesome. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> true. I like, the, I like when, yeah, right there, when, yeah. when Chris when just Chris reaches that nothing. Yeah. Good job by people point upstairs to give us. in the league just gets shown up there by Steph. It also had the point, the part where Steve Kerr, yeah, is, yeah. no, don't you want WTF. to. WTF. <laughs> wow, <laughs> LOL. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's a good one, but let's, uh, you know, go back through the history books. We'll start with you, Lee. Is there a particular clip that you could just watch on repeat and you cannot pick the 1987 <laughs> Relent, All-Star no, game? Oh, right. no, um, pick it's very rare. Michael Jordan is on the wrong end of a highlight play, but he was March 12, 1997, when a rookie oh. named Alan Iverson, you might have heard of him, crosses him up oh, once oh. and twice and then knocks it in. I mean, Jordan actually recovers pretty well. Yeah. He gets a hand right up there, but that second one just... Woo. Reaching at nothing. Yeah, yeah, he reaches that air. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, look at Iverson there. No tattoos really, short hair, <laughs> hasn't got the arm sleeve on. Super young. It's a yeah. classic. What yeah, did Jordan, classic. Jordan had like 40 in Yeah, the and the Bulls won, but yeah, still. still. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good clip. It's just a clip. What about you? Something I've gone back to a lot since Derrick Rose has been injured a lot, unfortunately, uh. is his humongous dunk on Goran Dragic circa 2010. He had a bunch of real big dunks around this time, but this was by far the best one. Oh. Just going up and keeps going up as soon as they meet at the rim. Even better with the Stacey King call. What are you doing, Dragic? <laughs> did you not get the memo? <laughs> Oh so my good. God. The way he lands is crazy. Yeah. I mean, it kind of understands why he would maybe get hurt the way he comes down so hard, but woo! That was I great. can't believe he went for a two handed, yeah. two feet, feet a jump for yeah. that dunk. And the two hand. It reminds me of Sprewell. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's right. what it, it's got the Pulls Sprewell. Pulls it way vibe. back. I'm going with Jordan, but on the other end, uh, Michael Jordan's dunk on Patrick Ewing oh, yeah. in the 91 uh, Pat. playoffs first round, where he, yeah, he gets double teamed on the baseline. Oh. See ya, Oak. Tiptoes. And then dunks on Patrick Ewing, one of the best shot blockers of all time. Of the course. replay here is awesome. But he keeps going yeah. up, right? Oh. Here. He goes higher. I'm not sure how that's oh. still possible. But Patrick even Jordan, Ewing, man. Even Jordan has talked about this clip saying it's How many great favorites. times was Patrick Ewing dunked on in the 90s by Bulls players? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah, he's one of my all-time favorite <laughs> Well, not players. for Patrick Ewing, <laughs> was it? But yeah, it was great. You. It was great. He kept him relevant. Yeah. No, it didn't. I'm only joking. Yeah. Patrick one of the best ever. Uh, so let's hear your favorite clips that you can watch over and over again. One more, though. A fun one. Swaggy P. Oh, yeah. Nick Young. Which now, now, which play? Yeah. Is it the three-pointer that he turned around and missed? No, we'll go with the 360 <laughs> baseline air ball. He's made the 360 layup sometimes Whoa. in his career, but this miss is way more memorable than any of those makes, no doubt. Oh, man. 2013. Swaggy. That is good. Oh, it looks, yeah, it looks like he's going to do it. Not even close. He hits the other side of the backboard on top of the backboard in the corner. So those, wow. are, those are basketball plays, but I, I pulled. I talked with Amadio, our producer, and JD. Pulled a few starters clips that I could personally watch over and over again. Right. We'll start with Tass. In what do we got? In oh. Summer League, Tass's oh, half-court oh, yeah. shot. <laughs> it was it's a, a long little night. little right. <laughs> right! Long night preceding that. And it's a little short. <laughs> that ball was slippery. Yeah. Oh, you got jeans on too. You need the shorts on there. Bad That's sight lines. Bad sight uh, lines. How about awkward dad oh, dance yeah. cam? Yeah. Oh, man. When the Spurs busted it out, I believe, first, and then we had our two dads here on the show, <laughs> man. This is actually why I became a dad, to be able to do dance moves like this. <laughs> Look at these moves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. said this show was white? <laughs> what are you That's talking about? That's the worst what is that? Uh, what are show you of all time. Doing? Look at that. Uh, and of course, oh, yeah. Bieber's <laughs> super crossover. We've played it a million times, now a million uh, times. Million oh, yeah. yeah. No, just a couple clips. I hope that was played at his roast. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. just had that. I didn't watch that. So there you go. So there you go. All right, let's get to the next question. Uh, it comes from James. Uh, James writes, NBA rivalries aren't what they used to be but there are still some good ones. Which two teams do you think have the biggest and best rivalry in the league today? We're talking today here. There are some teams that still hate each yep. other, and the Clippers tend to be one of the pairings in those pairs quite often. Blake Griffin in the middle of them. The first team that he really rivaled against was the Memphis Grizzlies. Yep. Faced each other in the playoffs his first two years in the postseason, two years back to back. And you know when Zach and Marcus Gasol are banging down yeah. low, they were trying to send a message to Blake Griffin game in and game out, and I think the message got through. It, this oh, was yeah. a fun old school series whenever these two meet up. And it's only, they've only met twice. It yeah. feels like they've met 
six or seven well, times. Well, they play four times during the regular season as well. So yeah, once. every game in the regular season, they're throwing each other around too. Uh, you said the Clippers sort of have a, a yeah. good rivalry with a lot of teams. I think you have to say the Clips Warriors would be on that list. This is the new one, I think. This yeah. is a bit of the new one. Uh, these two teams really hate each other. I like this one because it spreads from off the floor mm. in, to, uh, you know, post-game interviews where someone's bumping someone we just saw here. There's yeah. Dante Jones bumping Draymond talk. Green. And then Glenn, uh, Glenn Rivers, Doc Rivers. <laughs> Not Glenn's right. Whole story, Glenn. story, Glenn. Yeah, we got that whole story. No well, pregame daps, love that. And what about the Thunder Rockets? Yeah, the specter of James Harden kind of hovers over this whole thing, what with uh, him changing teams and the way Patrick Beverly just went at Russell Westbrook. Pretty much changed the title here. Yeah, and right. Things have really not been the same for the Thunder since that injury. That's and right. it's pretty crazy because they always are scrapping these two. Russell Westbrook gets angry very easily. Yeah. Patrick Beverly is a guy that makes a lot of people angry yeah. pretty easily. It's pretty fun to watch because those guys are just well, crazy. Well, Steven Adams gets under a lot of guys' oh, skin. Oh, man, yeah. Well, people hate stuff. Dwight Howard anyways. There's a lot of headbutts. It's a, it's a good, fun rivalry. I love Scott Brooks getting in there. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. don't, don't mess with my old team. Yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that's yeah. right. Yeah, absolutely right. Let's hear what you guys think. Jump on Twitter, hashtag the starters. What's your favorite rivalry right now? One more quick question. I love this one. Uh, Samuel writes, did you guys see that robot firing shirts into the crowd at Philly? Does that thing scare you as much as it scares me? Yes, Samuel. Oh. Uh, if you missed this, I think we have a small clip of it. Yeah, they have uh, a robot. Do you remember the show Robot Wars, where <laughs> yeah, people yeah. built robots and they like killed each other and yeah, battled is, each other? This is strange. That's what that's, this looks like. It exploded I mean, like a musket, too. Yeah, if one of those things fires it into the yeah. people sitting right there. <laughs> or, or what about the people operating? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All I can I mean, see I is it. when I see it is one of those arms going haywire and just yeah, hitting no, people I, I, I in the face. Yeah. So yeah, Samuel, it does scare us as much as you. I, I know you're. I guess <laughs> and it's not particularly fancy that robot either. You know, it's just like two arms just firing things off. Like, oh, it's version 1.0. Wait until uh, they yeah, yeah. Jump on it. Wow. I know really the Sixers crazy. want Frank to save costs. Just get some people. Yeah. Well, just chuck them. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the emails, guys. Got to take a break. When we come back, we'll count down the starters' top ten plays from the past five days. Yeah, working with a short week here, but we still got some good ones. All right, back with the starters. If you ever wonder what goes on uh, during the commercial break, Lee tends to do some yoga moves. I don't know if this is yoga. Yeah. Lee tries to balance. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's yeah, I think you'd have a little bit more range of motion. Uh, yeah. I, I, You've been I, taking I, classes yeah, probably, for like know, a year. But I, yeah, but I'm like I'm wearing jeans and I wasn't warmed up. Right? Pretty no, but your baggy. jeans are so <laughs> baggy. You got no, so much not. room in them. They're not. They're a bit tight because it's a, it's a bit sweaty today. All right, all right. So there you go. I'm glad we showed you that. It's That's very warm here today. All right, let's get to the starters. <laughs> Top ten plays for the past five days at number ten. Anthony Davis once again going very. Very high for a new. Just get it in the vicinity of the rim. He'll take care of the rest. It yeah, doesn't no. even have to be accurate. It shouldn't count as an assist, that. Because you're not really doing anything. You're just letting go of the ball. <laughs> At number nine, we've got Rasul Butler. It's not a three, it's a throwdown. Razzy! Yeah. Use his real name, please. <laughs> Razzy Butts. Razzy Butts, yeah. It has to be the Durrell Wright situation for Butler to get a dunk, and Durrell was there hanging out. Look at that. Not bad. At number eight, Manu Ginobili with the chase down block. Oh, yes. Now, with the right. I love that Kevin Martin just puts it right out in front, but good timing from Ginobili. Yeah, Beautiful, Mano Ginobili. Man. Yeah, Still got those whatever. Hops. Hey, you remember that dunk on Bosch last year oh, in yeah. the playoffs? You can get up. Isaiah Cannon gets a lay-in. Nice. Oh, that's not why we're showing this. We're showing a good Jared Jack. Look at that. Oh, Do yeah. some yoga. Get some balance. Good point by our producer, Matt. Maybe the first time a whoopsie has made the top ten. Yeah. Legendary oh, yeah. moment. That Man. was a whoopsie on Monday. It's true. Tass, we only have five days to work with here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's some questionable plays. At number six, another this chase down block. This is good. And it's yeah. from Jeremy Lin. Oh, yeah. On Draymond Green times it perfectly. I think this surprised Green. Oh, Draymond oh, yeah. was not expecting <laughs> No, that. he was like, okay, sure. easy left hand layup here. Nope, Lin times it. Go to the other side, Draymond. Alexei Shved gets tapped in the face and just tosses it up, and it goes down. <laughs> Good that's, luck. That's like what he did a few weeks ago when it went 25 feet yeah, under. Yeah, 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 except this one went in. You're a top 10 play with him. He held his face for a while there. <laughs> At number four, I love this one. It's the Lafonso Ellis, Aaron Gordon. Look at that. Straight up oh, yeah. block so steal. <laughs> just times it perfectly on Zeller. Oh, Give me that's that. Mean. Tyler Zeller dejected, turning back down yeah. for it. Oh, man. Looks like Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, very sad. At number three, these moments have been too few and far between. Kenneth Fareed highlights. Oh, just uh, haven't seen enough. You're right. Oh, I'm true. freed by the shackles of Brian Chop. He's been good since Melvin Hunt's taken over, for sure. True. The animal's back. You're right. I like that. All right. And at number two on the top ten plays of the week, it's LeBron. Now, it's a little fancy. It's a little different type of oop. Cuts baseline. 
Nice pass from yeah. Shumpert. Great timing. Beautiful. Probably not what? going on LeBron's career highlight reel, though. <laughs> okay, maybe not. At number one, Chandler Parsons lines up DeAndre Jordan, goes by him, and oh! Ooh. Goes out of bounds and throws it over the backboard. Very bird I don't want to play horse with Chandler Parsons if he's knocking those in during the game. Good point. He's yeah. probably a very good horse player. Yeah, very good horse player. Do you think you could Confirmed. beat an NBA player at horse? Uh, uh, depends which one. Kendrick Perkins, maybe? No, uh, if it's DeAndre Jordan, maybe. Oh, Just free throw. Free throw. Oh, Just yeah. go to the free throw line. Oh, the challenge. Throw another gauntlet. That's dirty. All right, agree, disagree with the top 10 plays. Let us know on Twitter. Let's unleash the unicorn, though. Get out here. Starters Fantasy Unicorn. And today's Fantasy Minute presented by FanDuel, the leader in one day fantasy sports. It's a little bit. We're looking at the fantasy lines of the night. Three nominations, Andre Drummond, Victor Oladipo, and Reggie Jackson. Third place, third place Woe Boy goes to Drummond. He's always on this list, yeah. by the way. Against the Grizzlies, 16 points on six of 12 shooting, four of six at the line. Wow, lead. that's not bad. That's huge. For him, 16 boards, one assist, two steals, and he had five blocks. So did it all against the Grizz. Oladipo, our runner-up Woe Boy, against the Rockets, 29 points on 11 of 21 shooting, perfect at the line, six of six. One three-pointer made, four rebounds, three assists, and four steals. You know I love the defense when yeah, it comes to Woe Boy. You, you gotta throw in the defense. <laughs> Except for this guy, because look at this game. Wow. 20-20 vision here from Reggie Jackson against the Grizzlies. 23 points, 10 of 18 shooting, perfect at the line, only one. Two three-pointers made, two rebounds, 20 assists, one not steal. Bad. Not bad. Is that the first time teammates have been on the same Woe Boy? Probably not. No, I don't believe so. But I think the only other guy to have a 20 Last night's pick and payoff results, three and two for both Tass and I. We agreed on all five games. Yeah, the Pistons and the Knicks beat the Grizzlies and the Spurs. This, this isn't easy sometimes, but here's tonight's picks. We agree on four games. We like the Blazers and the Pacers and the Clippers on the road. We like the Warriors at home to the Hawks. That should be a great game. The one game we disagree on, I'll take the 76ers at home. Tass has got the Pistons, so good luck to you. Lee, very solid play of the night. Where are we going? Yes, we're going to Detroit, actually, and I have a new play. It's called the netball play. Okay because no one dribbles it, and they finish with a score. If you're familiar with the rules of netball, you don't dribble, you just pass it around, and that's what the uh, Memphis Grizzlies do. Is that still, Marcus is that Hall still a game? Off to Udru, and that's what I call a very <laughs> solid play. Do people still play netball? Yeah, it's a fantastic game. Okay. Really good I for your cardio workout. I honestly didn't know that. Yeah. All right, guys, so here's the deal. March Madness, of course, uh, really kicking off on Thursday. No starter show on Thursday or Friday, back on Monday with the TV show, but we did record an hour-long podcast this morning that's on iTunes and the blog. It's called The Drop. Got into a whole lot of topics, including Serge Ibaka's injury a little bit more. So check that out. And again, back on Monday. Thank you for joining us, folks. Have a great weekend. And remember, 90% of dancing is in the face if you can't dance. <laughs> <Like ELS. laughs> Embrace the night, people.